show to the next guest. It's a, uh, okay, so it's again a chef and it's Christina Bauerman from Italy. Hello, Christina. Hello, how are you? Fine, how are you? We are so happy to have you here. Oh, well, thank you so much for inviting me. It is a great pleasure. I am so sorry. I'm, I, I sprinted home because I wanted to be in a, you know, in like in a silent place. I just got back from the restaurant from a right. lunch service. Great, great. So thank you very much for making this whole in your agenda. We know you're very busy. So uh, the stage is yours. Everything for you. Wonderful. Thank so one of the things I would like to do, uh, let me see if I can uh, succeed in doing that, is actually to share my screen. So because I have a small PDF that I'm, I'm using as um, a sort of a, uh, kind of like leading guide so that I know what I'm talking about because conversation and the topic is so wide and so immense that probably we can uh, lose ourselves uh, while we talk. So the question that I always ask myself, and this is something that we've been discussing with uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Sonia Massari, is that, first of all, the misunderstanding about design. A lot of people in my field think that design, um, food design actually attains only to plates or how the beautiful, or how the table looks beautiful and so on. But design is something else. It's actually something that helps us out in what we do. And so the question that comes, uh, you know, natural is that desi does design comes before ideas or vice versa? That is something that I've been debating for such a long time because a lot, you know, most of the questions or every single time I get interviewed, the question is, well, how does your creativity, where does your creativity come, uh, come from? Or how do you get your ideas? Well, uh, the question, the answer is actually very wide because I always say anything for a creative person can be of inspiration. It could be a walk in the park, it could be a picture, it could be like honestly anything. And um, especially food, it's very difficult to separate what comes first? So one of the things that I say is like one of the oldest question, uh, the answer to the oldest question is that the creativity simulates design or vice versa. Well, I think honestly that that depends on uh, how the person is. The process is very personal. Like I have my own creative process, but the stimuli can honestly come from anywhere. And uh, mine goes around in circles. So sometimes it's the, um, the image or whatever the experience that simulates the creativity, or sometimes it's just an idea that I form myself through my experiences that simulate something else. So I uh, put here one example of how the uh, creativity process and how food design can help out the creative process. This I assimilated to, um, this is a Villa Royale Bosch, but the idea is almost like a Matryoshka Russian doll. You know, you kind of open it up and it, there's always a surprise inside. The reason is because when people actually go to a restaurant, one of the things that they want is not just eat because you can eat anywhere and you can eat well anywhere. You can go in trattorias, you can go in Osteria here in Italy, but I think anywhere in the world, you know, a pub or a bistro, or whatever. But the emotion and the, the sensation that you have whenever you're having lunch or dinner in a special place is different. So how do you actually improve and increase your emotion, your uh, experience? Well, this is one example. This is like a matriasca doll. So the chef can actually put different ingredients, different plates within one bowl. So it's the element of surprise. In this particular case, it's the design that supports the creativity. You would have, you would have never been able to do it otherwise because you know, how can you hide at the same time, keep perfectly, uh, uh, perfectly fine whatever plate you had in mind. This is one example. There are several, you know, like the egg, the egg shape or even different shape, but they hide things inside. 
Well, this for a person like me is like, wow, you know, I can really build a lot of stuff in there. I can really surprise my client. And so the experience is totally amplified. And that's what I like when I think about food design and if we could make like, honestly, a gazillion example on how the experience, which is something that the client looks for in restaurants like ours, can support, not only support, can actually stimulate the creativity. That's the part that we need to enhance when we talk about food design. Food design is just not like a nice pattern or you know, a bright porcelain or uh, a particular design fork or knife. It's something that is structural and amplifies and helps out and simulates the creativity of both of the chef and the experience of the client. I made it like a one very small example and I apologize, this is not like really the honest, perfect picture of what I do, but it was the closest one that I could make. I had, um, I staged by, uh, you know, the Roca Brothers for a very short period of time and I learned their technique, which is something that allows you to put in your mouth, whatever shape, it could be a ball, you know, like a sphere, or it could be like a, you know, a square, but inside it's totally liquid. And the greatest part of all is that because it's a cocoa butter on the outside, it leaves your mouth perfectly clean. It's not something fatty. So I change it like every once in a while. So I do a Bloody Mary, a gin and tonic, uh, I don't know, uh, a pisco sour, but, the problem is that anytime you need to place that sphere somewhere, if you put it in contact with any kind of metal, it melts like this because cocoa butter melts basically at uh, body temperature. So I needed something to isolate and I needed something to uh, kind of enhance what I was doing. So I went to a designer and I said, look, I got this problem. I have this idea. I want to do this, but I don't know how to do it. And honestly, my tables are not that big. And also I serve the aperitif, so I don't have that much space. So he came up with this idea, which is for me was genius because you put metal, but it's like concave. So I can isolate my cocoa butter sphere from anything else. So sometimes if I want to do it savory, I put salt. Otherwise I just put, you know, sugar. So it isolates and it's perfectly fine. And they are like, uh, this big, so it's, uh, I don't know, seven or eight centimeters tall. So whenever I bring it to the table, people say, wow, what is this? And they don't have any idea of what it is. And it's pretty cool. So that's how instead the opposite, because before we saw an example of how the food design can actually stimulate creativity. In this particular case, it's exactly the opposite. I needed something and the designer came into, my, came into help and said, this is how we do it. This is how I would do it. And it's perfectly fine, by the way, with all the glass uh, architectural designs. So it's, uh, it's all like something out of context. So he studied the, the design, he studied the architecture, he studied the colors and he said, okay, this is what I would do. And I had these for such a long time and they always uh, show off whenever I bring them to the table. And it's the first approach that the client has. It's the first thing that they get because it's a welcome. So it kind of like sets the mood for the dinner. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I am going to have like a good experience. So this is instead uh, something that it's in the middle. It's like how the, the food design can help, can stimulate the creativity of the chef and vice versa. It's a chef that finally says, oh, there is something that I can totally use to enhance that experience of uh, my clients. Uh, a lot of people right now have been using liquid nitrogen. Uh, we've had very you know, important chefs that have had the opportunity of bringing liquid nitrogen into the front of the house. And so prepare something. If, you could, if we can talk, if we can imagine or we could mention many chefs that have brought like a huge like silver bowl with the liquid nitrogen. So there's all the smoke and so on. But honestly, it is very nice, but it's also kind of dangerous. And honestly, it's a kind of expensive. And honestly, it is a kind of uh, uh, so specific that not the front of the house can do it. And also it is uh, uh, kind of like cumbersome because you have this huge thing that somehow you have to handle. 
And so you have to pour the liquid nitrogen as you need it. So these guys, I don't know who was the first, honestly, um, uh, decided basically to create a sort of like freezing um, machine. So whenever you pour something, anything on that uh, surface, it freezes up and allows you to work it right in front of the client. That is exactly what food design does. It helps you out because whenever you are, let's say you wanna make ice cream, which is the easiest thing, uh, thing to think, but honestly, you can do any, you know, anything you want. I don't know, foie gras cream, if we wanna think about something expensive or we can do like a sort of like little caviar that freezes up as soon as it uh, in contact with, uh, with the surface. But let's say we talk about ice cream. You pour the liquid and all of a sudden you are working it. You know, you're homogenizing the ice cream and there it is right in front of your client, you made ice cream in a different way, in a modern way, in a safe way. So I think these are examples. And here I brought, you know, like the examples of what I saw in the past, the first and the third picture that you see right here. This is actually something that they did with uh, dry eyes. It's another thing that can be used to enhance the experience of the, uh, of the client. Uh, those are examples of what we have seen up to now. And for me, this machine is actually like the modernized way of the liquid nitrogen. But again, those are things that enhance clients' experience and stimulate the creativity because I could think of like a million things to do with that machine. One other thing I wanted to um, talk about as an example on how the creativity can be simulated. So here we are talking exactly the opposite because we always think of chefs that use food design. In this particular case, what I wanted to enhance is exactly the opposite, how food design can actually help the chef. This is like one of the uh, refrigerators. I had to be very careful to use photos that I took so that, so that I, can, I wouldn't use any other brands or whenever I used other brands, I made sure that it was very well uh, put in evidence. But this is like a, a sort of refrigerator with these like beautiful light it can be placed into the uh, front of the house, for, for instance. But at the same time, it allows me to grow any kind of vegetable. They gave it to me a long time ago. And I thought, okay, what am I gonna do with it? Because that's what I thought. It's like, okay, I can grow like 10 plants of basils, which is gonna be basically enough for about one day in my restaurant. But then I thought, no, that's not true. What I can do is that I can actually use specific plants only once that are very difficult to grow, but also it gives like a topic point and an experiential um, situation for my clients. So becoming the focus of, for instance, uh, a side of the room, it becomes a topical conversation. It gives me the chance to think about uh, how I can use, for instance, a specific ingredient for a specific, a specific dish. And uh, the fact that I can actually reunite the source, which is the plant that I am growing in there with what I'm using in there in my client's dish I can assure you it gives like a totally different experience, a totally di different depth of experience to my client, him or herself. So my point of all this is that we need to work to make people understand again, that food design is not what people always think. That is a nice little cutie thing that you put on the table, but how we can, actually use food design to enhance, improve, and stimulate our creativity, anybody's creativity, not only chefs, because we can we could make like literally a lot of examples which are related to the restaurant business, but not necessarily, you know, like the closest one to the kitchen, because people think always the kitchen or the actual table. There are like a, a lot of things that can be done and improved and um, advertised in order to uh, help us to create that experience that everybody looks for. Well, that is my point. Great, it's so, so, so interesting to hear a chef talking about food design with such an energy and such a good vibe. So really, I really appreciate a lot. 
And um, from this point of view is exactly what we think because many times chefs think that, you know, de food design is something they have to take out of their minds because designers will come with an avocado and a flower and will say this yeah. is food design and that's for you like something very basic. So we really appreciate your participation. And I just have a short question because we've sure. got three minutes. I know that you're ambassador, uh, a world ambassador of the Chef Manifesto, is that true? Well, uh, you, 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 let's put it this way. You two, two things that you put them together. I am part of Chef Manifesto. Yes, I am one of their ambassadors and I acti actively work with them. As a matter of fact, I have like a, one more convention uh, uh, on the 17th, which I think is tomorrow, yes. Um, but I'm also president of the ambassador of the taste, so Ambasciatori del Gusto here in Italy. I'm actually one of the founder, uh, founder and president of this uh, important uh, restaurant business uh, association that represents all the needs related to the restaurant business. And I think that we probably achieved the last week one of the biggest uh, achievements, sorry for the repetition of the word, of the word. Uh, but we have a permanent table at the government to talk about, uh, you know, problems uh, related to our our category, our class. So yes, that that's amazing. That's amazing. So um, I really I really appreciate what you're explaining, and we really hope to be able to collaborate with you because I think that um, well. All, all the chefs and uh, all the designers need to be closer up together through food design to improve the way you can cook, the experiences people can have, and the way the world needs to work. So Correct. thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much to you. And I really hope that out of this period, 2020, that we want to kick away and all the needs that came up during the, this last year, the food designers of the entire world can help us out to come out in the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for you. your words. Welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great. OK. So um, there we go with our next guest. Uh, Christina, we still have your, um, yes. So I guess that she will leave, and this will stop being yes. shared. And uh, we will come up with our next, OK, great. So we will come up now with our next guest.